Hi everyone, welcome to the video. It's an exciting one for me, this one. After 24 hours of travelling, we finally flew from Amsterdam to Hobart, the capital city of Tasmania, where we are now. And it's exciting because today is the day that I'm finally going to get a chance to photograph and video again the white wallabies of Bruni Island. Now, in Tasmania there are no shortage of wallabies. In, in fact we've had wallabies jumping around in the front yard of this house here which is just outside the capital city of, Tas of Hobart in Tasmania which I've already told you. But um, what's special about the wallabies in Bruni Island is that they're albinos which uh, means they've got white fur and kind of red spooky eyes but we bypass that because the rest of them is pretty cute and uh, also Bruni Island is just naturally beautiful as well so it'll take us about a 40 minute drive south and then I'm gonna take the ferry and then we're going to spend a few days in the, the beauty that is Bruni Island so welcome aboard and let's get to it Well, it's been about six years since I've been here, so I really hope that I remember the location uh, accurately. For those who are new to my channel, uh, I'm actually from Tasmania. I was born and raised here, uh, but I haven't been back for six years, so let's hope the wallabies are still where I remember them. got a little heron on a branch here behind us. It's still very dark conditions. I've brought my Canon 70D and my 400mm f5.6 prime lens, uh, but because it is so gloomy I also brought my Sigma f2.8 uh, lens which is image stabilised. This one isn't image stabilised so it's gloomy conditions. I just took a photo of that bird. Have to apologize for the sound, guys. My lapel mic broke uh, when I was using it yesterday. I was just giving it a test. So now I'm just using the Rode shotgun mic on the top of this camera. So apologies for the drop in sound. Oh, well, it's a good sign that I'm not too late. There's a wallaby over there. It's not a white one though, unfortunately. Just zoom in a bit, get a bit closer.
Well, I did finally come across an albino wallaby, but I've just checked the rear screen of my camera and it looks like this poor little guy has had some skin cancer on his ears and they've they're not there anymore which is really sad it's the only one I've seen I know the Australian Sun is really harsh I was out in uh, the Sun without any block out or a hat on the other day only for five minutes and I could already start feeling my face burning so I think maybe the pigmentation of their skin or just the the fact that their ears aren't protected as well by the dark fur might uh, mean they get sunburnt more easily anyway we'll push on and see if we can find some more so I walked around that area and I didn't see any more white wallabies I'd given up hope and when I was leaving uh, that area I saw a white speck in the distance quite strange really. I was looking forward to bringing these white wallabies in the beautiful natural Tasmanian wilderness and I end up finding them in this guy's backyard. Very kind of him to let me just wander around his yard like this. He doesn't know me. <laughs> so they're very uh, kind people. Um, so what I did, I first went with my camera and the 70 to 200 Sigma lens f2.8 and I tried to get some wide angle and uh, close-up shots, um, some with the uh, house and things around it and some I tried to isolate so that it appeared that the wallaby was in a natural setting for stock photography purposes. So I got a bit of both. Then I took the video camera and I pretty much did the same thing. I wanted to get the little wallaby up the hill um, by himself feeding and without any furniture in the, the background. So I tried to get as close to him as he was comfortable with. I'm just standing here now yapping away and they're still here just having a nice old feed. So yeah, and then I took a wide angle uh, with the uh, the garden bench in the background with it. So I might just hang around here and just enjoy them and try and get some more shots. They love feeding on people's garden plants. I suppose it's a bit more exotic than the usual grass or Australian bush. So white wallabies are a kind of mutation of normal coloured wallabies. Um, they're an albino and normally in the wild where you have uh, predators, the white or black uh, pigmentations would be easily spotted by those predators and culled out of the population. Now on Bruni Island they don't have uh, those predators because the Tasmanian tiger or the thylacine isn't here and it's extinct in the rest of Tasmania supposedly. Uh, but the white wallabies are looked after by the people who live on the island because they just enjoy seeing them around. Uh, so just because there's no predators and they're nurtured by the population, that's why on Bruni Island you tend to see more white wallabies.
Well, what an emotional roller coaster that was. I walked into the nice wildernessy kind of area. Not that wildernessy, to be honest, but at least it looked more natural. And I was really feeling down that I couldn't find these wallabies. And the first one I saw, the first white wallaby I saw, had no ears. So I was thinking, oh my god, this is like the white wallaby apocalypse. And, uh, you know, the encroachment of man has destroyed this uh, subspecies. And I was getting all <laughs> disappointed. But then uh, when I came out of the area and I saw them all just hanging around in uh, this backyard of this house uh, and I talked to the locals about what, it, what was going on then I became more enthusiastic and I've managed to finish with a nice photo shoot actually I say photo shoot because it's not wildlife photography what I was doing there. These uh, wallabies were just in a, a backyard feeding on the grass. Totally uh, okay with humans around them. But uh, it was a photo shoot so I managed to get some really good photos for stock uh, of the white wallaby in contrast to the normally coloured wallabies. Uh, I got some close up and detailed shots of the wallabies. I even got my phone camera out and did some Instagram pics which you'll probably have seen weeks before this and I got just a lot of video of the wallabies moving and stretching back and feeding on the the plant life so I count this uh, journey in search of the Bruni Island white wallabies as a success and in the true nature of wallabies in Tasmania they are no different to the other ones in their uh, characteristics, in their mannerisms. They do like hanging around people's backyards and eating all the garden plants like the other coloured wallabies. So it's more of a realistic shoot because wallabies in Tasmania are very prevalent. Uh, they're not that afraid of humans and they like hanging around in backyards. Anyway guys, Next video will be the day in the life of a stock photographer in Tasmania. So look out for that one and I will see you later.